sometimes we wanted to put those action figures away, but we still wanted to play Star Wars, so we play Star Wars board games, or Star Wars electronic games. Let's take a look at vintage Star Wars games. Let's start back in 1977. When it came to Star Wars toys, the games were one of the first things to hit the market, unlike the action figures that had to wait until early 1978. Kenner was able to crank out some of the electronic games and board games in 1977. So let's take a look first, starting with the board games. First up, we had Star Wars, The Adventures of R2-D2. Sorry, 3PO, you didn't get a board game. With this game here, you can experience the adventures of R2-D2, the true hero of the Rebellion. Players will take turns spinning and moving R2 to the next color circle along the adventure path. But you gotta watch out for those purple adventure circles. They'll send you backwards. But try to get to the white adventure circles to move forward. The first one to return to the rebel base on Yavin after destroying the Death Star wins the game. This game here was 2-4 to four players. And ages 4 plus. Now, I, don't, I never played this game, but... Let's be honest, a lot of these board games wasn't fun back then. My problem was I would get a board game for Christmas or my birthday or something, and being that my brother and my sister was older than me, no one wanted to play a board game with me. It was a wasted gift. It's like, here, here's a present for you of a game you had to play by yourself. Friends never want to play board games. I would end up just setting up the pieces, playing board games by myself in my own little unique way. But let's take a look at one also that I didn't have. It's the Star Wars Destroy Death Star game. Never like the title of this one. Sounds weird. Destroy Death Star Game. Wouldn't it sound better to call it Destroy the Death Star Game? I don't know. It just sounds pretty odd to me. And I never liked the box. It was just too big. It wasn't shaped like a board game box. And that bothered me. But with this Star Wars based game, you got to command a squadron of three X-Wing fighters and try to drop your proton torpedoes down the ventilation shaft of the Death Star before it can destroy Yavin. With a flick of the spinner, it would determine your movement and the results of battle. But be warned, Darth Vader can pop up to cause trouble. But watch out for the Millennium Falcon coming to the rescue. Star Wars Destroy Death Star Game was 2-4 to four players, took about 30 minutes to play, and ages 7 and up. 7 and up. 7 up. Sorry, if you are 6 years old, you couldn't play this game. You could watch your brother and sister, whoever you saw playing it. Maybe it was your parents playing it. You could sit back and watch. Well, let's take a look at a board game that I did have. And when it comes to Star Wars board games, I think this is the one that most of us had. This was a pretty popular game. The Star Wars Escape from Death Star game. Oh, why do they keep leaving off the word D? Escape from the Death Star. Anyway, it seems Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Chewbacca are trapped in the Death Star trash compactor. It's your challenge to help them escape to the freedom of the Rebel base. All these games once you get to the Rebel base. With a flick of the R2-D2 spinner, you can decide what is the best way to escape. The safe way is the long way, but time's running out. You must turn off the tractor beam and pick up a pair of secret plans. When you take the shortcut, you might encounter the force, but if you're daring, you could be the first aboard the Millennium Falcon, fight your way through TIE Fighters, and reach the Rebel base to win the game. The Star Wars Escape from Death Star game was 2-4 to four players, it took about 20 minutes to play, and was for ages 7 and up. Now, this game I had. This game I did play with my brother. This game I did play with friends. And I can tell you, this game sucks. I even tried to play as an adult because I have it. And it's just, it's boring. It's probably, it's almost as bad as that Kenner Alien board game. Remember that one? This this is horrible. And they re-released it a couple years ago with the retro Tarkin figure. So most of you got it then. Maybe if you played it, let me know. It's as horrible as I remember. I haven't, I haven't played it in a couple of weeks. So, let's look at the Star Wars electronic games. Also released in 1977 was Star Wars Electronic Laser Battle Game. This is a two-player game where players are attempting to battle their way to the Death Star and destroy it. Players have to test their reaction speed in the TIE Fighter battle. The first one in each round to hit the correct weapon button has one of the six LED lights to light up on the path to the Death Star in the middle. Once there, they have a chance to destroy the Death Star if they can win the final battle. The Star Wars Electronic Laser Battle game was for two players. There was really no time limit there. I guess it's all day fun. And for ages 8 and 6. I had a friend that had this game and it looked exciting, at least on the commercials. But uh, it sucked. It sucked. It, sucked. it, just, it just wasn't fun. It didn't look any... It just, these electronic games back then just wasn't as exciting as they made it sound. So let's take a look at another. The Star Wars Electronic Battle Command game. And if you thought the last one was boring, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. 
This looks kind of like some kind of computer panel. Looks like something you might see in a Star Wars ripoff a few years later. This was a space exploring game that you could play by yourself. All right. Or against three other players. The screen, as you can see here, was the LED grid. You could zoom in to get a closer look at the star system or come across other player ships as they battled online. <laughs> I'm just playing. They didn't battle online. You had to have friends with you. It has a display panel which shows you your location in hyperspace along with planets and enemies. This game was one to four players and ages four and up. I, I don't really, everything I've heard about this game is that it sucked. It looks like it sucks. It looks stupid. So I, I can't really add much more to that. So let's look at one that was kind of not really a Star Wars game, but kind of slapped Star Wars on it and kind of put some stickers on it and made it a Star Wars game. And uh, it's not really an electronic game or board games. So I don't really know where this one fits in. It's the Star Wars Flying Aces Target Game. This has a little gun at the top and you shoot these little ships. It looks like a lot of fun. I never played this one, but at my age, when this came out, I think I would enjoy this one, or at least thought I would enjoy it, unless it sucked. But yes, it's not a Star Wars game. It was first released as another game seen here. And it looks like they did keep the name Aces, which is odd. But you can have your own shooting gallery at home with the X-Wing Aces Target Game for ages 6 and up. It comes with a limited 180 day warranty. You know they put that right on the front of the box. This thing breaks easy. Let's go to Japan and look at one more toy. This is Star Wars Pinball. Although I've never seen this until I was an adult collector and I don't think I've ever seen it in real life. It looks pretty fun. I'm a sucker for pinball. But when it comes to pinball, you can't play pinball in a video game. It's got to be a pinball machine and have a ball. I don't understand people that play video pinball. But then again, I'm a pinball wizard. So maybe that's why. Well... Let's go to the Empire Strikes Back and start with those board games. The Star Wars Hoth Ice Planet Adventure Game. Spin the dial to pilot the Millennium Falcon around Hoth. There's incidents along the way and a battle with Force cards with the Imperial Forces. Plan your strategy with the Force cards and spin against Boba Fett, Stormtroopers, Probot, and Adat. Once you have enough Force, you can enter the center of the board and challenge Darth Vader. First player to master the Force and successfully outspin Darth Vader wins the game. This was two to four players. Took about 20 minutes to play and was for ages seven and up. Hoth Battle Game. This is the one they re-released a few years ago with a Luke retro figure. I don't know why it was, I don't know why they re-released, I don't, why didn't they make it Wedge or at least Dak? I, I, I don't know. Just upset. Oh. Hasbro! Let's move on. The Star Wars Yoda the Jedi Master Game released in 1981. Be the first player to become a Jedi Knight. Defeat the dark side of the force and win. Travel to the Dagobah system where Yoda, the ancient Jedi master, will teach you the ways of the force. Acquire some Jedi skills as you successfully accomplish difficult tasks and trials Yoda set up for your training. Your objective is to become a Jedi. Then enter the Jedi Knight circle and outspin Darth Vader to win the force. Outspin Darth Vader again? That's what you did on the last game. Well, let's look at one more game, at least board game, from The Empire Strikes Back. And this is one you really don't see much about. And it looks so odd. It's not released by Kenner, Parker Brothers, although it was owned by Kenner at the time. And the box just looks totally different compared to all these other boxes. But it looks pretty cool. Star Wars The Ultimate Space Adventure Game, released in 1982. Isn't this a cool looking box? You and your opponents are commanders in the Rebel Alliance. The remote ice planet Hoth has been your base since you escaped from the evil Empire forces. But wait! The Empire has sent probes into the far reaches of the galaxy, and your position has been revealed. Even now, an Imperial TIE fighter, commanded by the evil Darth Vader, is invading planet Hulk's atmosphere. To escape, you must pilot your X-Wing on a perilous journey through the unknown to planet Dantooine. <laughs> I didn't expect that one. One, and only one, Rebel fighter can complete this journey. Will it be yours? Ages 7 to 14. Now, this one has a stopping age. And it takes about 20 minutes to play and two to four players. If you're 15, I guess you could play it legally, but you wouldn't want to play it. Trust me, you don't want to be, you don't wouldn't want to play this game legally. If you're, I'm gonna come on, you too old to be playing board games at that age. <laughs> anyway, that's a look at board games for Empire Strikes Back. There was no electronic games. I guess Kenner learned that lesson in the late 70s. Like these things break, people send them back. Let's just not do it anymore. So, so let's just move on to Return of the Jedi, which uh, only released one board game, if you can call it a board game, and it, it's pretty awesome. Star Wars Return of the Jedi Battle at Sarlacc Pit, released in 1983. This is like a 3D board game. This thing looks pretty awesome. I found this at a flea market in the early 90s. Bought it. I wish I held on to it. Looked pretty cool set up. 
even if the sawlight pit looks like, you know what, you know, down there, inside the panties. You know what I'm talking about? That's what the starlight pit looks like, at least before they put the beak on it. Anyway, your favorite Star Wars heroes need your help. Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, and Chewbacca are being held captured by the evil Jabba the Hutt. They're on his sales barge, high above the dangerous sand pit where the monster Sarlacc lives. To escape, you must defeat the Gamorrean Guard and the powerful Nick Tu and Boba Fett. I think it's the first time I ever heard Nick Tu being referred to as the powerful. You have to push them overboard into the Sarlacc's waiting jaws. Collect Jedi points for each guard you defeat and then try to overpower Jabba the Hutt. The one with the most Jedi points at the end of the game is the winner. This game comes with a three-dimensional board game, 17 plastic pieces, 48 cards, and even a card holder. It's for ages 2 to 4. It takes about 30 minutes to play in ages 7 and up. 7 and up. 7 and up. This thing's awesome. I never really played it as a game. I don't think. I, used, I found it at a flea market. I didn't know about it until the 90s, and I set it up. It was just really cool to push the little figures in the Starlight pit. <laughs> I even dropped a few Star Wars action figures down that pit. Yeah, I was in my 20s then. Let's look at one more. Sadly, it wasn't from the U.S. And it's probably the first handheld LCD Star Wars game. I don't have any picture of this. This was released in Japan, so I really don't know much to say about this. I can't really add to it. But it looks like a couple of Kenner X-Wings finding a couple of Kenner AT-ATs on the box. Again, I wish I could tell you more. All I can tell you it was released in 1983. Well, we did. We looked at Star Wars games from the vintage era. I know you can say, what about the prequel games? No, we're not looking at the prequel games. We look at stuff on the prequels. We'll be here all day. There was so much stuff. There was really so much stuff from the prequel era. Well, that's it. And a reminder, two videos a day, noon and eight. Noon and eight, all times Eastern. And I think that's it. We're going to get out of here. Let me know in the comments below what game you had. Did you play any of these? Were they fun? Was I wrong about Zombie Bubble? You're like, Jumpman, you should have played that. You would have loved it. Well, I think that's it. Well, we'll be back tomorrow with two videos. As always, I'm going to turn on my content. Subscribe to the channel. Talk again soon. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.